Yes, yes, I'm Alex and thanks for checking out another video. Now I've just realized that this is actually my 100th YouTube lesson. I think that includes YouTube shorts, so not 100 full lengths, but still 100's a big number, man, so I'm stoked. So thanks to everyone who's joined the Wednesday crew by hitting that subscribe button, you absolute legends. So when I first started making these videos, one of the first names that I wrote down was Kendrick Scott's, the problem being that he's too sick, mate, and I can hardly play any of his grooves. So after a lot of work, I finally managed to just about cling on to this one, mate. So the groove we're gonna look at is from the Gretchen Parleto version of Blue and Green. Let's check it out with the tune, and then we'll have a little chat about it. What a groove, man, and completely original. I honestly would have never thought of that groove over this tune, but it sounds super sick. So the track is in 7-4 time. I tapped it out at about 106 BPM, and today we're gonna focus on breaking down the A section, although we will touch on what happens in the B section a little bit later on in the lesson. So the tune is in 7-4, but the first thing to note is that the backbeat, which is gonna be played as a cross stick on the snare drum, is played every other quarter note throughout the whole section, so therefore it goes over the bar line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know the score, mate. Now, if we just focus on the rhythm that our hands are gonna play for a second, for both bars, you're gonna play one E, a two E, a three E, a four E, a five E, a six E, a seven E, a. So where our left hand is gonna be playing a cross stick on the snare drum, our right stick is gonna be playing the snare drum as normal with the tip of the stick. But where it gets tricky is when we add these buzz strokes into the phrasing. So we've got snare buzz, snare cross stick buzz, snare, snare buzz, snare cross stick buzz, snare, all the way through and remember we're keeping that cross stick every other quarter note. Now slow, this might feel a little bit awkward but overall it's not too bad but you can imagine as you start to get a lot faster with it it's really tricky to get those buzz strokes and back into your normal snare hits sounding nice and consistent so take your time when you're building it up. Now as if that wasn't hard enough we now need to play that hand pattern over the top of a foot ostinato. Now the way that I'm thinking about this foot pattern is almost like samba feet. So bass, hats, bass, bass, hats, bass, bass, hats, bass. But the only difference is that your bass drum gets out of the way of the cross stick, so you still have your hi-hat foot played on the ands, but now your bass drum is gonna play one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a five E and a six E and a seven E and a. Let's check out the foot pattern whilst keeping our cross stick in there so you can hear how it's gonna start to fit together. All we need to do now is bring our right hand pattern back in, which is no easy task. So the real challenge here is gonna be the tempo. So as usual, I'll play it for you at half speed and then at full speed. Six. I'm definitely still working on this one myself, but that's our A section down, man. So let's have a quick look at what happens in the B section of the track. So overall, what Kendrick Scott is playing is a little bit more chilled out, a little bit more simple, and we can just count the whole section in 4-4. Four, four. But you might notice that the feel changes, or it sounds like there's a tempo change, which in a sense there is, but it's actually a metric modulation from the A section into the B section. So the whole band are gonna take the speed of a dotted eighth note in the A section, or you could think of it as every three sixteenth notes. And that's gonna become the downbeat pulse in our B section. Hold on, 
One second, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So, we've got one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a five e and a six e and a seven e and a. Okay, so that would be our dotted eighth note pulse. Now you can hear, if I stop counting over the top, this is just a straight pulse, just even notes. So all they do is they're just gonna turn this into the downbeat in the B section. So you've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. If that's still not making sense, then bear with me for one minute because I'll play the same exercise over the top of the track so that you can hear that shift. But one thing to bear in mind is that nobody in the band is actually playing that dotted eighth note rhythm. You've just got to get used to the way it feels. And I would imagine that all the musicians in this band have done these sorts of modulations so many times that there's no counting involved. It's more of a feel thing. But either way, check it out with the tune and hopefully it will help to tie it all together. Hopefully that made it a bit more clear to hear. Metric modulation is a bit of a mad one, mate, but it can be an interesting way of changing up the feel. If you're interested in learning more about metric modulation, there's a book that I'd definitely recommend by Gavin Harrison called Rhythmic Illusions, and it's just filled with displacements, metric modulations, and permutations, and it's definitely one more for your head than your body. But that's all I got for you today. So if you do go and learn any of the grooves that we looked at, and you upload a video of you playing them, tag me up, mate, because I'd absolutely love to see it. And if you're digging the videos, hit the button to join the Wednesday crew, man, and I'll catch you in the next lesson.